notes, tweets and shit. It'll be it'll be good. It'll be golden. We'll get this we'll get this going. I think we can do it. When you hear the sound of thunder I was watching Hell Track. Well highlights of. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. I like watching old inspirational extreme sports movies from the eighties. There's a lot of fucking games coming out this week, huh? Yeah, there was more, but I removed all the stuff that was like shit that's already been out that's coming out for Switch because whatever. Yeah. Because whatever. Let me get the shit tweeted and stuff. We're basically going to be on time (laughs) instead of early. (coughs) Oops. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. It's better than late. Better than late. That is true. When you hear the th- sound of thunder. Thunder. I like how thunder? this board is like, you're going to alert a thousand people. Are you sure you want to do that? It's my fucking Discord. Yes, I want to alert exactly that amount of people. What do you think I want to do? They can leave if they don't want the alert. All right. Or mute it. That's simple enough. Trying, trying to get, trying to get everything tweeted out. Uh, uh, dude, I'm tired. Long yeah. day. I just hung out with my mom, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the, uh, I'm gonna start the little intro, and then we'll just, we'll just start talking. We'll just start, we'll just start. You uh, drinking any people. tonight or no? Yeah, I got uh, just beer, man. I'm chilling. I got right. Hopadillo, Carbock right. well, Brewing Company. I'm going to finish off this bottle tonight. Cool. That sounds good. I'm going to start the intro. <coughs> There's only like two or three shots left. So and Three, two, fuck you. This is Blind Ryan and Sling Ring drunk at uh, 2.47, 247 in, the morning. in the morning. Yeah. Join Blind Ryan. And slingering as they talk about video games every Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time and 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Twitch.tv slash Blind Run Gaming. Thanks for tuning in, you sexy beasts. Yeah. What's up, sons? It's Blind Run and Slingering once again. Hello, hello. We're we're gonna talk about video games. And probably other stuff. I was going to tell you, I, I went shopping with my mom today. Because she was yes. like, I want to take you shopping for like Father's Day and shit like that. And I was like, free clothes. Fuck yeah. So I did <laughs> I did get dress boots. These are my first pair of dress boots ever. Dress boots? Like, I have like, like Texas dress boots? Like Texas, like ridiculous stitching. Like rattles, rattlesnake. Dr- with, like, I did not. Stars and I got basic. I got baffles. basic black leather but they are very stitched they are very very stitched um which is cool and i got the pointy toe for like super like in texas get away with going in a tuxedo in those boots kind of thing 
Right, I don't right. think up there you get away with it with these boots, but you should wear them up here because you're going to a wedding. I am here, wearing right? them to that wedding. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm 100%. gonna do. Because that's I'm the amazing. I'm the guy from Texas, so I'm gonna right. fucking wear boots and like a blazer and just yeah, it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be great. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, so we did that, but apparently it took us forever to find the second uh, piece of the pair. Because the way they, they sort them uh, at Cavender, if you guys have ever been there, Boot City, they put the first pair, they put one in the front, and then behind it, they put the second, the, the sec- whatever, the left or right foot, right? So to yeah. get the pair, you pull the front one. So the one I wanted, and you got to realize, Cavender Boot City pretty much just keeps like one of each boot. Like you're never really going to buy the exact same boot over and over. Right. Like right. it's just not possible. So I, I took the one from there, but the one behind it was missing. And I guess they said somebody quit and got super pissed off and like threw all the boots on the floor the day before. Like apparently he, <laughs> he quit in an extravagant manner. I was like, I want the, secu- I want the security amazing. footage from this. So apparently he just went down every aisle and knocked them all on the floor. So they were trying like that whole day they were trying to get all the boots or I guess today or all week, I guess, ever since this happened, trying to get the That's boots amazing. lined back up. Yeah. Um, which is apparently like the worst when like they have a whole bunch of handmade boots there that are like one of a kind, like, right. and yet like after a certain point, you're looking at all these boots and you're like, they're the same thing over and over. Like I would not be able to distinguish them. Like I'm not good enough at boots. So whoever is doing that should get paid more. Cause that takes some very, very high level, uh, skill boot skill. So boot skill. Yeah. I Is just that a imagine. Marketable thing? I think so. I think the guy was line dancing down the aisles and just knocking <laughs> the shit off. Like, I just hope he like cranked some fucking like southern fucking country. Completely, and, like, completely like flamboyantly like yeah, dancing. Flamboyantly. Bam, bam. You That'd be boots. Amazing. That'd be absolutely amazing. Well, and the thing is, is like it's it's such a hard store to shop in because they'll put like thousand dollar boots right next to like. Fucking two hundred dollar boots, right? Which there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing there under two hundred dollars. So when you're shopping right. there, you'll look at one and you'll pull it off. You'll be like, "This is cool." Put it on. You'll be like, "Oh wait, sixteen hundred dollars. Never mind. Let's put that one." Back. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that one. Well, the unfortunate <laughs> thing being that you try those sixteen hundred dollar boots on. Oh, and, and they like, fit. Oh, feel, they fit great. I love. I love how my mom was like, "You gotta try this one." And I was like, "Okay, cool. Give it to me." So I took it. I put it on. I was like, "Yeah, I like you're buying. Let's grab these." She's like, we're not getting those. And I looked and it was like $700. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, oh. So she goes, she goes and says, here, try these on. These, well, these and awesome. then she proceeds. And then, yeah. and then says, no, 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 no. She, she proceeds to tell me how they're handmade. And she has a pair that have lasted her like 30 years or some shit. And I'm like, <laughs> I want the pair of boots that are going to last me 30 years. I mean, I mean, it's one of those things, though. Like, how often do you wear them that they last you 30 years? Right. You know, I mean, like, you're going to wear them wearing, wearing for, you know, as a, a joke thing to weddings where you're out of state, then you're going to wear them like four times. I mean, I life. guess if I ever got into line dancing, because I'm that <laughs> kind of guy. Do you see that coming in your future? That's a real question. Because no. if you do, then you know, maybe the $1,600 investment. Next year, is- it'll be like, let's start a podcast about line dancing. Let's oh. do it. I I'll mean, one of these times you're going to have to just title the 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 podcast that just for shits and giggles but anyway <laughs> uh what have you been playing this week bro <clears throat> so this week has been more of the same from the, the past couple two weeks uh beat sabers and, and and pokemon go i did throw down some rum royale with you and i did uh try a game or two of the sandhawk map from PUBG that was released on how is Friday. the map it's okay. Um, it's much smaller, so it's a lot faster. And okay. I don't know. I don't. It's one of those things that, like, when you go and look at the various battle royale games between Fortnite and Realm Royale and PUBG, uh, or at least the the popular ones right now, the speed of PUBG has always been more on the slow, like tactical side compared. Like, it's it's weird because. It is slow and tactical, but the engagements are fast. Like you get knocked out of the game in a split second all of the time. Right. So to go and kind of remove that kind of build up towards action and make it such that it's more action, 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 action. Um, 
it's probably a lot more high skill on that map to go and actually win uh the, combined with a little bit of luck such that you know you only have one person engaging you at a time instead of well, two or three. Well, I think the the ultimate problem with battle royales, right, is you drop, and the first chest you open is like survive or die at that point. Like if right. somebody drops near you, you gotta get something good on immediate drop, yep. or you, it's RNG at that point, and you just died. I mean, yes, there's still that you gotta Especially, actually get the hits in, but especially when you drop into a hot area. So if you're dropping in with a ton of people you have to get lucky right so i played realm royale a lot and i noticed that and played neo so um i'm getting good at realm royale good enough like we i'm platinum in uh squads i need to work on my solo scores but solos extraordinarily hard right for me um I probably need to go play like the slow method to rank up if I actually want to rank up. Right. Um, but at the same time I use solo to practice slaying because it's the best way to practice, like just getting kills and making sure, you know, you're actually able to aim and shoot people, which is a lot different in realm Royale than it is in like PUBG, Right. Uh, oh yeah. The, the gunplay is a little fluky in that i don't know if it's just that i'm not used to it yet or if it's as all get, about the skills as, as i've heard every, a number of people counterpoint me on that every weapon shoots different so when you yeah. pick up a weapon you need to be completely prepared for exactly how that weapon shoots and i'm saying when i say every weapon i mean every weapon in realm royale shoots completely different than every other weapon so it makes it very hard because if you get a drop and you pick up a weapon that you have very little practice with, you're probably going to lose either because the drop off's too short or too fast, or it takes a longer time for the bullet to actually reach the person. So you need a longer lead. Uh, it just takes a, like if I get an heirloom rifle and a shotgun right off the bat, I know I'm going to be top 10. Like that's right. kind of the thing. But if I drop in and I immediately get like a fucking slug rifle and a revolver then i'm going to be fighting pretty hard to get to the end of the <laughs> end of the round yeah. it's just like at that point i'm like i don't know what to do with this man so yeah no the revolver in that game definitely needs to be a hell of a lot stronger and actually there's a i think there's a couple times that i got like a repeating pistol that did like poison damage and it's like I would get two shot by the, a shotgun and well, I would put like nine shots of the repeating pistol into a person and they wouldn't die. So it's like, uh, guys, at a certain point, you need to go and realize like how much skill it takes to actually hit a shot and balance that out, make it worth it to actually use pistols. The poison pistol works well. Um, and so a lot of that re rebalancing has started to happen, right? But the heirloom rifle is still one of the best because the heirloom rifle is, if you pick up a legendary heirloom rifle, I think it's better than, than, than all the class legendaries because the thing does 800 damage. And if you get a headshot, it's 1400 damage, which is almost instant at, uh, kill. Yeah. On so the you get 1200 HP, right? Right. So to start, and then you what get. What if you have three legendary armors? Then, well, if you have all a full set of legendary armors, you have another twelve hundred armor, which is twenty four hundred twice. You know, twenty four hundred. But right. I mean, that's what that's three three shots from the heirloom rifle anyway, or two shots to the head, and they're right. done. Um, or like a, sh but it's pretty nuts. Uh, the only other thing is like. They added, so they have the classic alpha problem, which is every up, alpha problem. every update significantly swings favor or balance to a specific area on right. accident for whatever. So like right now they just released auto rifles into the game and they're super OP because they shoot fast and they do about like a like a regular rare one, which you can get dropped pretty easy, is going to do 250 damage a shot. They shoot significantly faster than any other weapon in the game, and it's pretty much game over at that point. So if you get an auto rifle right off the bat, then you're fucking, you're good. Then you're good. Um, <laughs> you're good. You're good. You're just good. Right. What are you drinking tonight? Some more tequila? Uh, yep. 
some more of this Toro de Lydia. If any of the viewers want to send me up some more bottles of this, I'm, I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. Maybe I should try to sneak some up for you this weekend. I, if you're, if you're checking any bags, I would love some more. I don't think I am checking any, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. The only other thing is I'm drinking uh, Hopadillo IPA. Hopadillo. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a Tex-Mex beer. I I'm, I know it's in Texas. The thing is, I know I don't it's green. Know. Yeah, it looks it's like green. it's green. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's disappearing it's on your disappearing. screen. Disappearing. I I don't know where exactly in Texas, but it has like a mix of you know it has the Spanglish going on on it. Uh, so, oh, Houston, Texas, found it. There you go. There you go. It's very it's very very hoppy. It's it's hoppy hoppy. I mean hoppadillo. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a thing getting into yeah. our first topic tonight though is video game addiction legitimate i'm asking us that question who as knows we, we go from, ah, get we, it do you get it as, as we go from what are we drinking to is video game Jeff addiction Smith, yeah. summertime we're just gonna swing all over the spectrum as far as uh seriousness who knows but, so who the world health organization i came up with that all on my own today i felt good <laughs> Um, <laughs> the, you came up with a cheesy headline. Good. Yeah. Uh, the world health organization, um, has said that they do find gaming as a, a, or gaming addiction as a legitimate thing. They say that it is a form of mental health illness. I guess they're putting it along the lines of alcohol, drugs, uh, all that sort of stuff. And I mean, World Health Organization isn't like, so that's not really states based, right? Um, right. This was, a, I think it was an article for, or not an article. It was a, it was primarily like a, a, a UK based study. Um, and then like the B roll of their shit and the guy they interview about the addiction is playing N64. Like, which is hilarious. Yeah, so it just shows out how out of date the organization is as it is, or at least the news uh, outlet that decided to cover it, right? They just Googled video games and went to some random, like, retro arcade thing that had, like, pinball machines and stuff and, like, N64s <laughs> and GameCubes. Right. Um, so, if that, I mean, if they really want to get into it, they probably need to take a look at the more damaging games, maybe something like WoW or something, you know. Uh, I, here's the thing. Is it addictive? I think anything can be addictive, if that makes sense. I agree sense. with you there. Like, there's, so, one of the but can it But can it be a legitimate mental health illness? I don't know that I agree with that. Yeah, I don't know about that. See, the, the thing that they go and talk about in the thing, uh, in the article that you linked me, the World Health Organization describes video game addiction as playing video games for an unhealthy amount of time. I kind of question uh, how much is an unhealthy amount of time. Yeah, they didn't I've define played, any of that, uh, right? Uh, not feeling like you can stop putting gaming over other life priorities and continuing to play games despite negative consequences, which I feel like I've done consistently throughout the years when i've had a game <laughs> that i really like play it's like oh all of the times that i've gone to bed at 4 a.m because i just wanted to get one more game of dota in or i was having a you know a streak no, of yeah, yeah. PUBG, it's, every, or i was raiding in world of warcraft or whatever every you know? like, every sunday or monday night for like two or three years where we would stay up extremely late when we had work the next day um, mm -hmm. I mean, we did that. Uh, how negative of an impact were we able to recover from it? Yeah, when shit hit the fan and we needed to fucking man up, we did it. Like, exactly. so I don't know. There's a difference, right? Because heroin's not gonna like. You can't just man up from heroin after being addicted to it, like straight up, right? Yeah, like, and it, the, like, the ability like, to go and drop video gaming cold turkey compared to other things, like. There's no There's physical been... withdrawal with video games, right? So, right. And so I don't know if there is a mental illness going on there, really. Like, define mental illness for me as well. Because that, that doesn't make any sense to me, personally. Like, Well, so I, that said, I don't necessarily think that they're wrong, either. Like, I, I think that there is... 
there's people that go and use video games as escapism. They go and use video games to go and get away from their real life. And they go and use video games to go and, and find something fulfilling when they're not having other things that are fulfilling in their life. They go and use it to go and, and, you know, feel the sense of accomplishment when they're not getting fulfillment through, you know, their jobs or their relationships. Right. So they, <clears throat> what they're, you can go and have that type of, you know, uh, addiction to video games because you're not having a fulfilling life. So you use it to go and, and round out the, you know, the limitations that you've, you've kind of cornered yourself in. So I, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things where, and I think Bimby's is, is right on the money is it's a, a crutch addiction and anything can fill that kind of addiction. Fishing, is what he went and pointed out could could fit that definition of addiction and i think it's one right. of those things you can take any hobby too seriously you can take any you know uh anything any aspect of your life and pursue it with a, a level of passion that people would go and call unhealthy have you ever seen like the mr happy books i don't know why this is coming up but we read them to i read them to the kids or whatever it's like uh everybody has like their own like crutch there's like mr happy and mr grumpy and mr whatever mr fast mr but they all have like the one thing they do but then i do realize like now like as we talk about this stuff like are we raising the kids wrong where each person has their specialty in these things but those things are not necessarily things to look up to because pretty much all of those things can turn into addiction right like you are grumpy or naturally known as a grumpy person because that's what satisfies you as a human being and you get addict addicted essentially to being just a mood being grumpy right like you full feel feel fulfilled at some point just from the mood that you put yourself in yeah but i don't know that you could go and argue that feeling getting fulfillment for something is means that you're addicted you know yeah, I so I, I think like one of the one of the books talks about Mr. Grumpy and how he likes to go fishing. I this is why it came up. He likes to go fishing all the time and just be grumpy while he fishes. Um, and so like at the end of the day, they're trying to find him a new hobby, and he, then they're just like, "No, nope, we know the hobby that's going to make you happy. It's being grumpy while fishing. So do <laughs> that all the time." And I was like, "I don't think that's a good." We should stop reading this book. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I think that that's not right. Uh, right. But I mean, maybe it's not okay to be happy all the time either, right? I 100% think that happiness isn't something to be pursued for 100% of the time. You need to feel the full range of emotions or you're not really being human. So, but. There you go. So that's our opinion. We have no opinion. <laughs> Video game addiction could be a thing. I think that this is just mainly a clickbait article and you got baited, bitches. So, <laughs> I had nothing else this week. It was dry, guys. It was dry. I was going to talk about, we were going to talk about Battle Royales, though, uh, and Fortnite in particular. Because Fortnite's gotten a lot of shit for being too difficult, sort of, as far as the building aspect. So Fortnite is planning on discouraging build-to-win strategies, which by that I mean getting to the end and then building extravagant defenses to win the final game. I don't think I like this. I think I disagree with it. Um, primarily based on the fact that I think that it's its main mechanic that it makes it most appealing to a majority of its players. Now, the problem that they have, right, is that it's currently the largest game in the world, I think. I think it has right. the most concurrent viewers uh, on Twitch. It has the most concurrent players or player base. And when you're talking about having that many people play, it's going to sound <coughs> like the majority might not want the building but that is also probably because they're worse at the building than other people that are kicking their ass. Like, so what do you do from an esports perspective? Or can it, I guess, can it even be an esports title? Or I, I don't know. My thing, my thing is, is that that's what sets it apart. So do you really want to move away from that? And no, I don't think they do want to move away from that. I understand the idea that they're trying to go in. They're trying to and, appeal to a larger audience base because they right. have the largest one out currently. And I think it's one of those things that if 
if they really want to go and minimize the the building, then they need to go and make you know an, like an alternative game mode. So in League of Legends and Dota, they have different game types such that you can you know play all random, all middle, or whatever, and that way it. it separates you from the people that are playing the main game the the people that are really trying to compete with whatever the correct met meta is but you're able to go and, and play the game in a way that's different than what's the you know easiest or what's the most competitive and i think that's the, what they really need to focus on not going and trying to go and remove what makes their game unique because if they rebalance this wrong in the way i read it and they they because it sounds like they're going to they could possibly rebalance it wrong like they're saying oh, shotgun should be strong, but other weapons have room to grow. What we're going to see, I think is what usually when I start seeing devs talk like this, they swing the fucking balance complete in the complete opposite direction. And then it doesn't really matter. It's still the same game. It's just different weapons are more powerful. And then for the building aspect, what do they do? They decrease the hit points on the buildings. And then at that point, nobody can really build anything. At that point, so the only still... thing that I saw that made sense is that they were looking to decrease the number of materials that you can carry, which I think if they decrease the number of materials you can carry, but increase the amount that you gather such that you can gather more quickly, because right now it's kind of a slog how much harvesting okay. you have to do in order to go in and be, be able to fully. build end game. Right. <laughs> if they do, do, do those two things, you might see something as crazy as having people doing some harvesting end game because they just ran out of materials. Uh, and if, if they do something like that, I think I'd be more interested in it than if they just tried to go in and, you know, even out and make some sort of rock, paper, scissors instead of having just the shotguns, rockets and building at the end game like they do right now. Yeah, I, I just always, always get scared in these earlier release titles when they say they're going to rebalance like a weapon. Right. Um, like I was talking about the alpha problem, right? And the other problem with battle royales in general is we're typically in a never-ending alpha, it feels like. It's not like there isn't an established meta, right? Most of the esports titles of the past, like... There is that established meta like Starcraft 2, Starcraft, like there is a good and a bad way to play. You learn how to play the good way and then you try to be competitive with that. But if you're fucking with the game all the time, then your top players are not going to be able to get an established meta and fully discover that multiplayer aspect, which will decrease the growth of your game in esports and overall decrease the, the, the appeal to the game at the end of the day. I don't think Fortnite will have that problem. I think they're smart enough because it is epic, right? They're probably, right. The, they probably have the most manpower out of any battle Royale other than maybe PUBG because of how many funds it run, uh, got early on, but they used all those funds to sue Fortnite. So <laughs> idiots. <laughs> so I don't know exactly what's going to go on there. Um, Foxfire says he's tired of John Wick's raining death from above on him in the last battles in Fortnite. Also, you can get one shot by shotguns at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, rebalance it, but don't make snipers super powerful or don't make SMG super powerful, right? Um, I mean, you just have to get it to a point that everything has its own range. But shouldn't, like, but shouldn't you know, this range of shotguns, this range yeah. is SMGs, this range is, you know, uh, and you play to the strength of the rifles, weapon you have. And then anything over this is, you know, sniper. I mean, Foxfire, shotguns and video games should pretty much always be one hit if you're within the proper range. That's yes. just the way every, like, if you have a shotgun in the video game, you should be able to get one shot i mean that's a, a complaint i have with uh realm royale right now is the shotguns like no matter how close you are are never going to be one hit and they should right. be one hit they should i mean one hit at least of health so if you're close enough with a shotgun in realm royale to the body should be 1200 points period but right. it's not uh however the sniper rifle from any range in realm royale is uh one hit of course that's a legendary class weapon but yeah um, <laughs> it, so maybe decrease the range but i think the thing is is if you watch any really high level 
play for Fortnite, you'll see that they are in usually pretty close range with the shotgun and they're using the building to their advantage to close people in and get them close to them and then dropping it on top of their heads or flying yep. up to them or some sort of. So I don't know that the balance is actually necessarily off with getting one shot by shotguns. I think that it's supposed to be there. Yeah, it's one of those things that it, the other thing is, is that the people that have been playing for a long ass time have gotten so much time and practiced into doing the methods that work to go and completely change the end game meta uh, just because people aren't good at building doesn't make sense. Yeah, just because the casual crowd isn't good at building doesn't mean you change the meta of the professional game. I think uh, I think other game types is a solution here. I don't think rebalancing is. That's my thing. Yeah. I think add in another game type, say this is casual play. The problem is that everybody has it in their head that they're going to be pro at a game, right? Um, yeah. So they're like, well, rebalance it so I can be pro. But let's be honest, right. dude, you're still not going to be any good. And what you'll probably do is just destroy the pro scene that you're trying to rebalance. Right. Um, and the people that you look up to, the reasons that you want to go pro the ninjas, the whoever, those people that you've been watching hours and hours and hours of their content because you go and look up in, in awe at their skill level, they're not going to be good anymore. So you're basically cutting the legs out of the people that you look up to just because you're bad at something. It's what happened to Call of Duty. Is there a Call of Duty esports league that anybody cares about anymore? No. What no. did Call of Duty do? They rebalanced so much to where the casual player felt like they were doing good. Right. Even though they weren't good. I mean, that's kind of, I mean, if you want to look at the way that affects the esports league, look at what happened to Call of Duty between Modern Warfare and now. And that's the exact thing that happened. Um, look at Gears of War and the difference between Gears of War 1, 2, and 3 and where the multiplayer is now. You'll see why that happened. Uh, they made it easier to kill people. They made it less penalty to die. Uh, they and and it was all to make it fun to the casual player, which is fine. But then they completely cut the legs out from underneath the pro scene, and that happens pretty much all the time when they start talking like Fortnite's talking right now. Right. So. So on that note. Yeah. Yeah. Game releases for the week. Per nautical activity coming out for the Switch on June 3rd, 20, fuck, 6th. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, I failed. It is a uh, classic FPS action game, likes of Doom and Quake, with randomness and uh, difficulty of modern roguelikes like Binding of Isaac and Spelunky. Next up on the list is Diablo 3 eternal collection for ps4 and xbox one what are they doing different here do you know then i like, have no idea what's out can you look it up no if i can follow your links if you can i don't i think the links are broke yeah all of them are broke from the looks of it so okay uh it's diablo 3 eternal collection bundle what do they have oh it has a necromancer class in it Oh, they're adding uh, Necromancer to console. Actually, Necromancer and con- so, on console would be kind of fun. I'm it's, not going to uh, lie. The Eternal Collection has the, the Necromancer class, the base game, and Reaper's Souls all all okay. together in one in one thing. I just so. I just need to upgrade to the Necromancer on mine, I think. Um, awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit, PC, PS4, and Xbox One, June 26th. It's uh, it's an upcoming free-to-play graphic adventure game uh, developed by Don, Don, Don't Nod Entertainment and published by Square Enix. So this one is actually the one that is very similar to uh, Life is Strange. I think it's by mm. the same people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're, you're along those lines, this will be one you want to pick up. Next up on the list is The Blob for the Switch. Coming out June 26th. And it looks kind of like a 3D version of Meat Boy. Really? Huh. Yeah. Like, like kind of. But it, it's a Switch version, so it's, like, more friendly. Okay. I can't really tell. What, like, it looks like you color walls and try to, like, take over through coloring the walls or something. I don't know. Maybe it, it's weird. 
It looks like Twisted's looking forward to the uh, the previous title, The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit. I would like that better than Life is Strange. I didn't dislike Life is Strange other than the fact that I didn't like the story because I had no... I'm not, a, I'm, not a thir- I'm not a 13 year old girl <laughs> isn't all of life is strange the story though yeah so i didn't like that <laughs> right. uh but i like that play style right so maybe i'll like this one because i can relate to it actually that sounds bad but i can relate because i was a boy once i'm not that old uh, <laughs> to the boy in that type of game next we have <clears throat> uh luminous remastered coming out for pc ps4 xbox one and switch this game's been out for a long time it's a puzzle game and uh, you're it's basically the hd remake of it uh, i don't know enough about it i never played it did you ever play it slang no it looks more along the lines of just a uh, extra complicated uh tetris <laughs> next up on the list we have Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle Donkey Kong Adventure for the Switch. Ooh. Which I honestly have no idea what it is. It's a what? Mario and Rabbids. I know what Rabbids looks like. That's that little crazy looking rabbit, right? His eye pops out and shit sometimes. Kingdom Battle and Donkey Kong Adventure. That sounds like a crazy mashup that somebody's going to love, but probably not me. Yeah, it looks... Yeah, weird. go ahead. Hey, <laughs> thanks weird. for the follow, explicit, explicit. I think that's right. Uh, Fighting EX Layer on PS4, June twenty eighth. Uh, it's an upcoming fighting video game developed by Arika and its spiritual successor to Street Fighter EX series. Uh, so, if you're a Street Fighter fan, this is what you're going to want to be looking at. It'll be coming out soon. I'm not a big Street Fighter fan anymore these days, but it looks like you're going to have... Here's the fighters, because I know they're expen- or important for you guys. Alan Snyder, Blair Dame, uh, Darren Mister, uh, Doctrine Dark, Garuda, Hayate, Hakudo, Jack. Jack, isn't Jack a... I thought Jack was a Tekken guy. Uh, Kari... Sanane, uh, Shadowgeist, uh, Shirasi, and Skullomania. Hey, thanks for all the follows coming in. JPG Ritter, CCS Para, and CSS World. Nice, thanks guys. 19F Florida. <laughs> what you? <laughs> Electric it, you. You fooled me. I thought you were a 13 year old girl, damn it. I tried. Never yeah. trust ASL again. That's <laughs> why I said trust. 19F Florida. <laughs> Yeah, I had to read chat. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, Electrocute. How is uh, next up on the list, Pokemon Quest for Android and iOS, which is kind of like the weirdest game that was announced by Nintendo. Yeah, because there's Pokemon Go already. And who's going right. to play this over Pokemon Go? Well, I mean, this isn't something where you have to move. So fat people, maybe? <laughs> I, um, Lazy it's an action... <laughs> Action, a free to start action RPG for uh, the Android I- iOS in Switch, apparently. And it's you kind of wander around a, an island and they make all of the fucking Pokemon into like blocky cube shaped things. So okay. it's weird. Uh, Galaxy Variant S coming to the Switch on June 28th. This is another remake, right? Uh, no, there was Galaxy. No, yeah. This is just a remake of Gallant Z coming out. It's a twin stick shooter, I believe, from what I can see here. Eh. I mean, Next. If, if you need a game like that. <laughs> I do like qu- twin stick shooters. Uh, next up on the list, Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus coming to Switch, June 29th. Why does the Switch have weird fucking release dates? Like, just come out on Tuesday like everybody else. Because Friday means people can binge it. That's why Netflix switched all their releases to Friday. I think they sell better on Friday. You get off work, you go buy whatever, go home, binge Luke Cage all weekend, and fucking call it a day. Right. Uh, Crash Bandicoot. Uh, is this a new one? Uh, Sane Trilogy. PC, Xbox One, and Switch. Insane Trilogy it's sounds already like it's just been re-released. out on PS4. Yeah, it came out on PS4 on June 30th, 2017. 
Uh, if you guys don't know what Crash Bandicoot is, fucking Google it, and I don't know why you wouldn't. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Next up on the list, the Crew 2 for PC, PS4, Xbox One. Uh, the, crew 20... one, oh. the Crew 1 sucked, and there's Forza Horizon, so play a real racer that actually gets fucking licenses with car companies that makes it more fun and better customization. I don't know. I don't see the point to the Crew, especially with Forza Horizon 4 coming. I don't see the point of it. I mean, I've never been a racing game guy, so... Eh. I am. You know, but... the, the only racing game I've ever liked has been... Uh, Twisted Metal, which isn't even really a racing game, <laughs> and Mario Kart. So outside was, of those two, what was the game on Dreamcast that we played? Uh, V8. Uh, what was that game? It was the I'm same thing. Vig Vigilante Eight. Vigilante. Vigilante. Oh, and it was like it was like Twisted Metal. Yeah, Vigilante. It was called Vigilante Eight. Dear Lord, look at that game. It had the ambulance in it. I remember that game. June 1st, 1998. We are old as fuck. <laughs> we, we played that together. <laughs> yep. That's how old we are. Let's, yep. not ta let's not talk about that anymore, guys. That's rough. Uh, last game on the list is MXGP Pro coming to PC, PS4, and Xbox One on June 29th. Uh, this is essentially a MotoGP game. Or no, motocross game. Don't play it. They're all bad. There's never been a good one that ever captured physics of motocross ever. The only good bike off-road bike game is Trials. Buy that one. Play the piss out of it. The rest of these are awful. Don't do it. <laughs> Waste of money. Well, we'll answer some questions in chat and talk with you guys, and then we're going to play some games. It is a shorter podcast tonight. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thanks for all the follows, guys. Um, I'm 18 OMG, 35 OMG. I'm bald by choice. <laughs> oh, twisted, I love you, man. Just got back from real racing today. Your head is killing you. What is real racing? That's here in San Antonio or what? I don't, I don't know. Well, drifting. Oh, you were drifting tonight with uh, Shane or what? And then uh, Need for Speed games used to be awesome. Yes, they did. Uh, da, 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 da. Nothing yet. She's riding along, bro. Uh, best gaming, uh, best racing game on Dreamcast is 4x4 Evo, by the way. You think so? There was a Tokyo... Uh, Tokyo racing game... Uh, Dreamcast. It was the best I thought there was. It's uh, let uh, Tokyo Extreme Racer. That was my favorite Tokyo Extreme or er, uh, Racer on Dreamcast. And you could flash your lights. You'd be driving around the city, and you'd flash the lights, and then it would start the race. It was the first game that ever really did that. That game was fucking sick, dude. <laughs> the game was sick. Uh, heat was unbearable. Yeah, I bought some new Nike uh, basketball shorts today, and uh, I, I bought Nike, uh, what are these called, flip-flops, and uh, the, it, the, they're called the comfort, the, the footbed, comfort footbed, and if you guys want flip-flops to make your feet feel like they're in heaven, you should buy these, because they're delicious. <laughs> they're delicious. delicious? You spend a lot of time licking your sandals? Uh, I mean, sorry, they're like walking on a cloud or on sunshine, oh, okay. like right, walking on sunshine. Better. Walking on sunshine. I am going to get Nike. I got to get a Nike headband though. I got the Under Armour one on. New goal is to be sponsored by Champion. Champion. <laughs> All right. I think that wraps it up for the night. Yeah. We'll, uh, what are we going to close play? out and then jump in probably some Rum Royale. Okay, we're going to play Realm Royale. We'll be right back. I only turn the stream off for a split second and then turn it back on. That away, uh, in case you guys don't know, I can actually clip it easier for other things later. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Tuesday. Also known as Sunday, uh, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Well, just do the math. Peace. <laughs> Uh, da 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 da.